Apocalypsis. Throughout all the history of mankind, it has been God chasing the sinner and not the other way around. God is not an enemy of the sinner. God is an enemy of sin. He's chasing the sinner to separate him from sin. And God is righteous and making the sinner righteous. Glory to God. Welcome to Apocalypse, the Light Embassy Gathering with a man of God, Apostle Dennis Judah. I'm going to be very slow and very soft so that all of us can understand because I'm going to explain a little bit of, uh, of deep things. Now, Jeremiah chapter 10. Jeremiah chapter 10. Let's go to verse 23. Let's start with verse 23. Jeremiah chapter 10, verse 23. The Bible says, verse 23, the Bible says, O Lord, I know that the way of man is not in himself. I want us to read with understanding, right? We're not just reading uh, sacraments. We're reading scripture and it's life and it's the word of God. Somebody say, Amen. So the Bible says, And O Lord, I know that the way of man is not in himself. And he says, It is not in man that walketh to direct his steps. Did you understand that? First look at me, then I'm, I'm going to explain it, then we go to deeper scripture. Before God allows scripture to be canonized, there are very many books that were written that were able to be put in the Bible. Praise the Lord. There are very many men of God that lived that did not get a chance of having their books canonized in the Bible, yet they were very spiritual men. There's a man, for example, called Enoch. Praise the Lord. One of the most spiritual men that have ever lived. Who could not test death? Enoch did not die. The Bible says he walked with God and he was no more. For God took him. One day Enoch, Enoch was fellowshipping with God so much. He was a man of the secret place. That one day he woke up and his body drifted away in the air. And he could not be seen anymore. He did not die. Do you get what I'm saying? But the book of Enoch was not canonized into the Bible. Are you following what I'm saying? Are you following what I'm saying? Now the book of Enoch, one of the reasons why they could not put it in the Bible is because it has very deep mysteries that some people reading them, they will not think God was speaking. But some of us have got a chance to access, to access the book of Enoch. But now, anything that you find in the Bible, in 1 Timothy, the Bible says that all scripture is God-breathed. Right? And it says and it's applicable for doctrine for teaching, for rebuke, and for extortion and encouragement in love. Before we go into the encouragement and extortion and all these things, the Bible says, all scripture is God breathed. The Amplified Version says, all scripture is the breath of God. Is that clear? It means God will not allow anything to be in the Bible unless he has approved it. So now this is Jeremiah stating a fact and he says, Lord, I know it as though it's God who has told him. I know it that it's not in man to direct his own way. Do you get what I'm saying? And it's not in man to choose his own ways. Jeremiah is trying to show us that man was not made to choose for himself his ways and how he will walk and how he makes decisions. Now, as I start this, somebody will say, but recently you're the very person that taught us that man has will and he chooses for himself and God cannot choose for him. Right? What I will, what I will make you understand is that the will of man is a force that was given to man not to choose for himself what to do. But the will of man was given to man to choose which spirit to surrender to. Is, is that clear to you? Man has not been made as an original creature. Man is not an original creation. Man, before he was made, he was copied from somewhere. You get what I'm saying? The Bible says in Genesis chapter 3, in Genesis chapter 1, verse 26, he says, let us make man in our own right image and likeness. Is that clear to you now? It means before God made man, it was, man was not an idea that was new in God. Man was a product of God looking at himself and he copied himself and made a thing called man. Man was not an idea. Do you get what I'm saying? Man was a copy. Man is a copy 
of another creation. God is a being that existed already. And then God looked at himself and he chose to do a copy of himself. So it means man was not made to depend on himself. Man was made with will so that he could not be a robot or a computer, but with will to choose who to surrender to. Is that clear to you? Man can only function on the realm of the earth if he has surrendered to a spirit. So this simply means, okay, let me get it deeper so you can understand it. Galatians chapter 5, verse 17. Galatians chapter 5, verse 17. If you're there, you say an amen. You're not yet there. All right. Galatians chapter 5, verse 17. Let me read from the KJV. Galatians chapter 5, verse 17. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Are you there now? What does the Bible say? Does it say that the spirit wrestles against the flesh? Uh huh. Yes. You see? The Bible says that for the flesh lasteth, the word lasting there is the word wrestling. That the, that the flesh wrestles against the flesh. The, the flesh wrestles against the spirit. And the spirit wrestles against the flesh. So that man. And these things go co against contrary one another. So that you cannot do the things that you wish to do. You get what I'm saying? It means man has been made. And is a spiritual being. That he cannot do what he wants to do. In Colossians, Paul says that what I wish to do, I do not. And what I do not wish to do, I do. And there's a battle in my flesh. Are you following what I'm saying? Paul says that he cannot do what he wants. Somehow every day he finds himself fighting to do what he wants. And what he doesn't want to do, he finds himself, he has done it already. And when he wants to do something, he cannot do it. Am I clear? Now, in 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 19, if you will go there. It will also prove to you that man is not independent. 1 Corinthians chapter 6. Verse 19. What does the Bible say? It says, What? It says, Know ye not that your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost, which is in you? Hallelujah. And then it says, Which ye have of God? And it says, And don't you know that you are not of your own? clear? He says you have been bought at a price. Now you are not your own. He says don't you know that your bodies are temples of the Holy Spirit which was given to you by God and can't you tell that you don't belong to yourself? Don't you know that you are not your own? You are somebody else's belonging. Now if you're following me, I'm going to start explaining and expounding on it. The Bible is trying to show us that God has not made man to depend on self. A man can think he is thinking by himself. But actually, even when man thinks he is thinking by himself and operating and functioning by himself, even that idea is a lie from another spirit. Man has been made to yield to a spirit and then the spirit works through him. Now, we're talking about two kinds of spirits. One is God. Another one is what? The devil, right? Now, the devil is the ruler of this world, the Bible says. And when every man was born, he was born fallen. I know you have heard people saying, me, I was born a believer. Me, I was born a Catholic. Me, I was born a Protestant. Me, I was born a Muslim. That's nonsense. No man is born saved. Praise the Lord. That's why John chapter 3, Jesus says to Nicodemus that I promise you, verily, verily, I say unto you, that no man can see the kingdom of heaven. See, see. Nicodemus asked him, what can I do to access, to enter the kingdom of heaven? Jesus said, before you enter, seeing only. He says, no man can see the kingdom of God. The other one says, how can I enter? This one says, no, leave alone the entering. You cannot even see if you are not born again. Somebody say, I get it. Now, God, Jesus is trying to tell Nicodemus that, look, you cannot even catch a glimpse of the kingdom of God if you're not born again. To be born again means to be born for the second time. It means you are already born but now you're getting born by a different womb. If you're following me, say amen. amen. 
Now you are born. And then Jesus goes to explain it. He's like, and then the man asks him, but how do I get born again? How can my mother conceive me again yet he has already pushed me out? Huh? How can I be born again? Do I enter my mother's womb? And then, and then Jesus was wondering and marveling. He says, are you a master, a rabbi, a bishop in Israel and you do not know these things? He says to be born again is to be born of the spirit. Do you get what I'm saying? Now the spirit of God bears you. That's what they call being born again. That a man has been convinced and has believed that Jesus is Lord and he has given his life. The Bible says he who spares his life shall lose it, but he who giveth his life shall gain eternal life. Somebody say amen. amen. Now this is what it is. That God is trying to show to you that look, when, when before a man got born again, he was subject to the spirit which rules this world. It's called the devil. Whether he wants or he does not want. Whether he's beautiful or he's ugly. Whether he's tall or he's young or he's short or what. Whether he's educated or he's not educated. If a man has not been born again, he has been subjected and he is ruled by the power of the devil. But when a man gets born again, this is what I want to say and this is where I want you to understand. He is no longer under the domain of the devil. But the man which is born again can have the devil influence him. You get what I'm saying? You are no longer under the domain of the devil. The Bible says you have been translated from the kingdom of darkness and you have been called into the place and the kingdom of his mother light, the kingdom of his son. Do you get what I'm saying? And now you have been changed. You are no longer in darkness. You are this side. You have, you have shifted places and you now are in God. Lift your hand and say, I am in God. But let me explain it to you. That if a man does not understand it, he can be influenced. He can be influenced. He is in another kingdom, yet he is living by the rules of the other kingdom. Praise our Lord. Why? Because Matthew chapter 6, Matthew chapter 7, when you go to, to verse 15 and verse 17, the Bible says, be careful of false prophets, right? He says, can a man plant a grape? Praise our Lord. And reap a fruit with thistles. He says, but ye shall know them by their what? By their fruits, right? Yeah. Right? Yes. He says, you shall know them by their fruit. In other words, you see, we are in a dispensation where everybody says false prophet, false apostle, false what? But there's also something called a false Christian. And we do not tend to look at that. But we also look at them, false Christians, with the same agenda with the same formula we know them by their what by their fruit okay a false prophet is more dangerous but you see a false christian is dangerous to himself <clears throat> what do i mean by false christian if god says you shall know false prophet by their fruits you also know false christian by their fruit do you get what i'm saying in other words, a man can come in this kingdom. Why are men called Christians? Acts chapter 10 says they were first called Christians at Antioch. Right? The reason why they were called Christians is because people looked at them and they looked and they walked and they behaved like Christ. And so Christ would walk into a city and three by the time he leaves, five men who are blind are seeing. Christ would enter into the city with his entourage and by, and by the time he leaves, a man who was going to bury his son would go back with his son alive. Now, when these guys were entering cities, they were doing the very same things that Christ used to do when he was still alive. Praise the Lord. And so they looked at them, they're like, they are like Christ. Because the word Christian is actually a tetragrammation of two, which is Christ, Greek, Christos, and Ian. Christos, which means the anointed one. Ian, which means similar, similar, copy. In other words, they say they are copies of Christ. Somebody say amen. But why were they called Christians? Because you see, God did not call us Christians. No. It is the men of the world that called us Christians. By looking at our fruit. In other words, you do not qualify to be called a Christian unless you have fruit. If you do not have fruit, you are no, not yet qualified. In other words, men are the ones supposed to call you Christian. You're not supposed to tell people, I am a Christian. People should look at you and they say, mm, this guy looks like the things we read in the Bible. Do you get what I'm saying? People are supposed to look at you and they're like, ah, oh, they say Jesus walked on water. Do you get what I'm saying? They're like, these things are stories that we had in the Bible, but this guy lives exactly like them. This guy must be a Christ-like 
You are not supposed to spend that. You see, my name is, uh, and I am a Christian. Huh? huh? <laughs> I'm a Christian because Christianity has become a religion. But you see, Christianity is not religion. Christianity can only become religion when it, is, it loses power. When Christianity has no power, then it, that's when it becomes religion. Christianity is not religion. Christianity is a life. Do you get what I'm saying? It's a way of life. But when that way of life loses the power which is in it, it becomes a tradition. It becomes a religion. So be, people become, begin, begin to, sl- to slit themselves into Methodist, Catholics, Anglicans. You understand? But majorly Christianity, w- that thing was called Christianity on men because they saw them walking like Jesus. Somebody say, I get you. So let me get deeper in it. Now, we have very many people on earth who are Christians. But their fruits do not actually show that they are men living with Jesus. Their fruits are not fruits that show that they are men living with Christ. What do I want to touch here? I want to touch the part in you that causes you to be a Christian and live a powerless life and still be comfortable. I want you to get angry about it by the time you leave this place. I want you to go uncomfortable until you begin to contact power and you begin to walk in power on a personal basis. Because if a Christian is a powerless Christian, he is a false Christian. If you are a follower of Jesus Christ and there is no power in your life, you are a liar. Why? Because the Bible says these signs shall follow them which believe. The Bible does not say these signs shall follow the apostles. The Bible says these signs shall follow them which believe. And the Bible begins to list the signs. It says they shall speak in other tongues. That's number one. The Bible says they shall cast out demons. That's number two. The Bible says they shall drink poison and it shall in no way hurt them. The Bible says they shall step on scorpions and cobras. He's talking about witchcraft. I want to know how many Christians are in this house. That if you woke up in the morning and you're going to work, you found a slaughtered chicken on your door. And you found it bleeding and fresh. Praise the Lord. And you found a paper telling you, you are dying today evening. This was a sacrifice on your life. I want to know how many Christians would walk over that chicken and get it up and slow and, and throw it away. And still walk like nothing happened. I want to know how many Christians, praise the Lord, will encounter face to face with a witch doctor. Praise the Lord. Remember this one says I'm a Christian. I have Jesus Christ. I have Jesus Christ. My God. They put on their statuses. My God fights my battles. They simply write things which are not actually realities in their life. They put it on WhatsApp and on Facebook and they post the scriptures and they post it and these things do not make real sense in their lives because you will know when they encounter another man who has another kind of power. If a witch doctor stood before you like now and he says, if you are really a Christian, cross this line. But I am trying to show you that the power of a believer is too much that sometimes whether he knows or he does not know, that power is at work. But there's one thing that is able to freeze that power. It's the ignorance of a believer. So again, I'm going to ask a question. Which, um, which one amongst us, praise the Lord, can encounter an occultic member? A man who serves and drinks blood always, praise the Lord. And meets, who can meet you and, 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 and swing you like this? Which one among you has the audacity to challenge a man who has been sleeping in a grave for four days? Get what I'm saying? Because you see, the dimensions of God are dimensions of power. Lift your hand and speak with me. I am a creature of power. Now, it is very wrong for a Christian to think that Christianity is a group of culture that when very many people think like that, that you entered Christianity simply to change character. You understand? You get what I'm saying? That's why people point fingers at people with damaged genes. You get that's why people point fingers at people with dreadlocks. That's why people point fingers at people. Do you get what I'm saying? Christianity has been revolutionized. They do not understand. I'm not saying we are not characterized. I am saying character is one of the smallest things to deal with in Christianity. Christianity is a whole thing about power. If you are a man who is a Christian and you're a woman who is a Christian, a son of God, 
and you are focused you are focused is on character what man is putting on what man is wearing what they look like you are still a baby of the spirit because you you're supposed to the bible says the gospel is not in mere words the bible says the gospel is in the demonstration of the spirit and of power the gospel is two things the spirit and power that you know what to do when your baby get begins to to be to, to become epileptic in the night you don't need to call an apostle you know how to wake up and put the devil where he belongs and you look like nothing happened and you sleep again that is the life of a christian that you know how to deal with your economy when it begins to get crippled on a daily basis you can wake up and you say you know what devil today no, me and you let's see who is stronger and you lock yourself in a room and you say today deaths are stopping because you are a creature of power and you know how to put things in order you are a christian but you tell yourself i'm a christian and you are a weakling like a grass you are so weak and you're like a reed and you still say i am a christian you are a liar you are a big fat liar because if you are a christian you should be focusing on contacting the power of god because we are in the world right now we are in the world right now where people do not dominate because they are educated people do not dominate because they are academically excellent people do not dominate because they are beautiful people dominate because because they have contacted an invisible power people dominate their world because they have power the men who you see in charge are spiritual men again i will say it again life is spiritual men that you see who are in charge of other men they are men of the spirit you can be lied by their degrees you can be lied by their masters and their phds but they are men who have contacted power They are men who have contacted power. I was in Kasubi the last two years and I was preaching. In a conference. I don't always speak about demonology. I know it. But I don't always preach about demonology and witchcraft and all those things. And one of the apostles that had come to preach said for him, he has been called to do what? To restore men. So he preached and preached and preached and really he spoke a way I cannot preach but he preached that way and actually delivered men. Do you get what I'm saying? and he said in the evening at two i'm going to be preaching and he says everybody if you know you are at home and you have witchcraft at your place i want you to go and bring it and i was shocked praise the lord young ladies in jeans you get what i'm saying they're holding things like this bringing to be burnt and i'm like who gave them the idea no the whole issue is that everybody understands that life is about the invisible power it's not about the beauty of the face. It's about how much you can command in the spirit. Because there are men who are here and they do not know how much will happen to them. Dave Hogan is a preacher. Let me tell you. He's a preacher who has risen the largest number of dead bodies. Dave Hogan, his wife said, my husband died twice and I refused him to die. I raised him back to life. The, the, the woman literally saw his, her husband dying the first night and he died and the woman refused and rose her husband back to life. And the next day the husband was knocked by a car and he still died and they announced him dead and the woman walked to the hospital and still rose her husband back to life. And so we are raising a... Let me tell you, if you are going to be a son or a daughter of Dennis Judah, of the spirit, you're not going to be a no, a, a, a neither called no hot something. No, no, no. If you are planning to be just that kind of weakling, don't come back here next Friday. If you are not planning to contact power and know how to deal with spirits and know how to change the direction of things that are happening in your life, don't waste time. I'm raising generals here. I'm raising generals. Look, I'm raising women, praise the Lord, who will wake up and there is commotion in her marriage. Praise the Lord. And she says, you know what? I'm not going to need no counselor. I'm not going to go to no pastor. And she locks herself in the bedroom and she speaks to God and praise the Lord. And for in three hours, she walks out and she knows she has sorted it. She walks out and she knows she has sorted it. I'm talking about men who will wake up and you go to work and they tell you these guys, the, the director has said you're not going to work, work again. And you say it's okay and you walk home. And as you enter a taxi or whatever your car and you begin to cry, and you 
praise the Lord. You switch on the power. And when you switch on the power, people call you because, because you did something. When, look, occultic members, satanists, they know how to disappear from cars when they're going to have accidents. Children of God, when they do that, they fear to get power because people will call them satanists. And the Bible says that the children of the light are in their days more stupid than the children of darkness. Jesus said that. That the children of the darkness are wiser than the children of light here in their, in, in their generation. Somebody say amen. amen. I want to say that you must get tired of a powerless life. You must get tired of a powerless life. Again, let me say it again. Power has not, made be, has not been made available for apostles and, 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 and prophets. Power is an availability of every Christian. It's a right of every Christian to walk in power. I want to raise men and women who will come to a level where nobody is scared of witchcraft. Praise the Lord. People begin to take fastings. People take fasts. People take weeks fasting simply because they had an idea that somebody is going to bewitch them. And I look at them and I laugh loud. Do you know why? Because they do not know their blessing in the spirit. If a man understands his blessing in the spirit, there are things that cannot bother you. There are things that cannot bother you. There are things that cannot bother you. There are things that cannot spend... There are things that cannot cause you to, to, be, to, be, to, be, to lose appetite. Somebody say Amen. Do you know why you have been dealing with the same thing for one year, two years, three years? It's because your mouth claims you are of God. But your fruits show that you're not actually of God. Why? Let me show you how men contact power. Then we shall finish. Praise the Lord. So the Bible says that the same spirit that rose Jesus Christ from the dead is within you. Right? You know that? Do you realize, let me show you. Do you realize that Psalms 100 says that one day in the presence of the Lord is what 1,000 years, right? It does not say 1,000 days. 1,000 years. It means, what, uh, you internalize that scripture. One day in the presence of the Lord is what 1,000 years. It simply means that what a man can do in one day, if you've spent 24 hours in the presence of the Lord, another man who is outside needs 1,000 years to accomplish. That what a man can do in one day of the presence of God. If a man spent 24 hours in the utmost presence of God, another man who is outside needs 1,000 years to accomplish what this guy did in 24 hours. And let, let me tell you these things. I want you to get these things out of your mind that some things are made for chosen people. You are chosen. You are chosen. The power of God is available for every Christian. Every Christian. Every Christian. There's nothing like it is for apostles. No. No, no, no. Abraham was not an apostle. Enoch was not an apostle. He was not. Stephen, the guy who used to raise dead bodies and, and get sick men out of wheelchairs, he was not anything. He was not even an usher. These signs follow them which believe. The Holy Spirit is the same spirit in you, the same spirit in your neighbor, the same spirit in me. But you have the same Jesus and you come to me for answers. Why? Why? Is your Jesus a junior Jesus? And men of God do not tell you these things because they want you to depend on, the, on them. And I don't want that. I want men to depend on you. Because the Bible says, out of your belly shall flow rivers of living waters. You're supposed to be solution to the world. When you stretch your hand out, Jesus has stretched his hand. But they don't want to believe that. So they go somewhere, we pray. They're like doctors. We treat God is the healer. That's not us. That's the medical world. We are we are not medical. No. We are epignosco. We lay hands on people and heal them. Lift and say, I'm a healing minister. So who has a problem at home? Go heal them. You want to take a step of faith and something inside of you tells you, if you're an apostle, if you're a CBB, Togeza, praise the Lord. Now, when that voice speaks, Please realize that it's the devil and ignore him, please. And continue and lay the hand. What if it doesn't happen? How can it not happen? Get to your feet. 
Praise the Lord. Thank you for tuning in to this broadcast. But these things can only make sense if you have received Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior. And if that is what you're considering, let me lead you through this prayer. Say, Lord Jesus Christ, I come to you. Forgive my sins and cleanse me from any uncleanliness. From this day, become Lord and Savior of my life. I am saved. In Jesus' mighty name, welcome to the family of God. And for those of you that would want to access our material, you can access it on YouTube at Apocalypsis TLEG. Or you can also follow us on Facebook at our Facebook page, Fellowship Apocalypsis. You're going to be blessed by the light scrolls every day and the material that we store up there on a daily basis. And God is going to bless you in the name of Jesus.